Hello, sweet tooth here. I hope your day is going well. Hakuna Matata. Welcome back. Gonna play some more Eternal Darkness. Like a chump. I can't do anything other. Anyways, start it up. The darkness comes! Okay. Now... Even though Alex is getting more and more insane the entire time playing every single one of these chapters, reading all these chapters of the Eternal Darkness Tome, gonna read the next one. Why not? Lose even more of sanity. The war to end all wars redefined how mankind looked at war and the value of human life. Over 19,000 men lost their lives every day in the trenches of the Somme. Some say uselessly, some invoke a higher cause. I read accounts of the slaughter from many journalists who spent time in the trenches, but I found the account of a certain Peter Jacob to be the most horrible of all. His implication about the ancients' involvement with the war was hideous and so obvious. With the horror of the Battle of the Somme scant miles away and the distant echoes of pounding artillery, a young journalist named Peter Jacob researched his latest story from the front lines. His grim task brought him to Oublier Cathedral, now transformed into a field hospital. I find no solace in the purpose behind all the senseless violence that surrounds me. Young men die at a rate unheard of in centuries of warfare. Shelling, machine guns, and mustard gas. Rip, pierce, and burn to flesh. Men soak gauze and own urine to stop the insidious gas. The hospitals here cannot cope with the torrent of wounded. A soldier's letter lies on the table, waiting to be sent home. I was admitted to this hospital on Tuesday. The damage caused to my legs was slight, but there is no way that I could ever walk normally again. I hate this place. Every day I am reminded that I will never be able to do the things I love. The hospital is a very strange place, converted from an old cathedral. There is an odd atmosphere around it, silent but for the words of the wounded calling out in the night. There is no doubt, it is haunted. What I find most odd in this place is that you never see anyone but anyone leave during the day. It's not right. No goodbyes or farewells. Just an empty bed when you wake. Covered with blunt stained sheets, these poor souls have passed from this world. For them, the suffering is over. But for those around them, the ordeal continues. The faint sound of moaning emanates from behind the linen veils. Whispered ut utterances, frantic prayers to loved ones, words offered only by those who face their mortality. With a motherly voice, the nurse advises that Peter get some rest. The soldier is rather distressed. Perhaps he has a lot of friends through the trenches. 
They lost a lot of friends to the ten trenches of the psalm. He confides that the only stories are sad ones and that the only true heroes are in the mortuary. <laughs> for the old tower as it is a restricted area. Private Thompson, by order of Lieutenant Hargraves, on behalf of HRH George Fee, you are to leave your post of duty and rally in the street outside Ubli Cathedral. Further orders will be presented at the rallying point. God save the king. Burnicle is fashioned from aged varnished mahogany. Doors are closed in addition to your food and your book. The altar is cleared of all valuables, not only to prevent looting, but also to afford space for medical supplies and even as an operating table should the need arise. Guard quietly but strongly points out that the area is in The guard frowns and ushers Peter away from the Oregon. He explains that it is one of the few antiques in the region that has so far survived the war, and that while he's alive, he will remain intact. The design steps appear to lead up into the wall going nowhere. Curfew has been imposed. Traveling outside the hospital is not a safe thing to do since intruders will likely be shot on sight. Peter decides to remain inside. Deeply on the landing, crates of medical supplies await use. Sorrets of morphine bandages, tourniquets, antiseptics, was designed.
to Magret. I've been here for over a week now. There is no word when I will be allowed to leave. Strange things have happened. At night the sounds of the hospital change. Echoes of voices that don't belong to anyone haunt the walls and corridors. The rel restless ghosts, perhaps, are sounds of movement or whispers. I have seen war firsthand, and the sounds at night in this hospital scare me more than I ever thought possible. What is going on here at night? Why do I feel so threatened? My fears are worsened by the talk of the other young soldiers. One said he had heard the cries, had heard cries, for help in the middle of the night. Cries that were only answered by snarls of rage and not compassion. Another said Lance Corporal Haskell had not been distar discharged, but had gone missing. I stare at his empty bed with a sense of unholy dread gnawing at my heart. Just about obviously bored with his duty and awaiting a replacement and perhaps a call to arms. And you show him the uh, order. Where he holds the orders and begins to read them before explaining them. Bloody hell, lad. You must be on the offensive. Following the orders, he takes leave of his post. Designed to muster patriotic feelings, these posters declare that the Allies are fighting the good fight. It's small comfort for the occupants of the room, whose spent corpses line the cold cathedral floor. Stacked like logs, Peter stands before the price of human war. The bloody corpses of young men who have fought made the ultimate sacrifice to defend their own countries and those of others.
kept meticulously clean. Peter is surprised that it is not more chaotic for a frontline hospital. After all, isn't this where the death certificates are written? Like the Marie Celeste, the desk hasn't been touched in some time, as though it, its user suddenly turned away and never returned. A half-written letter bespeaks silent, unfinished activity. of the pipe organ have remained mostly the same since installation. Originally the bellows were driven manually, now they are steam powered and the organ controlled electric electrically. This might be one of the oldest restored pipe organs in the world. I don't want to use it again. 
This room has fallen into disuse. The shelves, once full of books and scrolls, are now rife with dust, bearing nothing but trash and debris. Stands wreathed in cold mist. As Peter nears the stone, a sense of deep woe gnaws at his heart. The cathedral is just undoubtedly evil, and that's the holy place he will die to be. medical supplies awaiting use and treatment. Covered with bloody folklore friends, it is hard to tell whether they are actually used to save lives or just to relieve the suffering. This room has been converted into a rudimentary morgue. Bloodstained sheets cover the unfortunate souls who have passed to beyond. Assassinated by the creatures now infesting the cathedral. He 
went quickly and without much of a struggle. It's an eight. That's why. It's not a five. It's an eight. Oh, One of the cathedral's guards lies dead by his post. His death was sudden and violent. His broken limbs twisted at odd angles, with a trickle of blood issuing from his mouth and ears. full of maturing wine lined the cellar amidst the race of the cold air. When the war is over, if it ever is, the wine will be of a good vintage. The soldier's body lies on the floor. Far from the front line, this poor man met his end. His fate is far removed from his brothers in arms, a victim of the cathedral rather than by a bullet or a bayonet. <clears throat> oh, 
old, rusty, but faithful for many years. The coal burning boiler provides heat and steam to the cathedral complex. There's currently no pressure being diverted to the generator. No. Appears to be a hole in the wall. It is large enough for a small dog to pass through. of a soldier, a patient from the hospital lies slumped against the door. Trying to hide from the horror, he had barricaded himself inside the room before succumbing to his wounds. The room is used to store coal for use in the steam boiler that powers the cathedral generator. Small piles are all that's left and will be almost endless while the lease supply is a long way off. Perched on the wall beside the generator is an open face fuse box. The fuse appears to be missing. There's no sign of where it could be. This is actually where you use the lucky penny. Peter puts the lucky penny in place of the missing fuse. It fits quite nicely, but there isn't any power running through the circuit. Nothing happens. Peter retrieves the penny and places it in his pocket. got every single one of those. Let's see. Try to remember what those were. Um,
swear. Um, Military area? Perfect. That was that was actually the spell that I was looking for. That was the one I was looking for. Spell eleven. I could have done it a lot a long time ago. Once I had the summon. Well. Watch, I'll show what it does. This one is one of the best spells. Summon area. Again. And once you have Mantarox Ruin, you do regeneration for all your abilities. Um, let's see. Now that I remember it, the last one was like protect creature or something. Nope. There we go. That's a final spell. You can actually bind a creature, now that I think about it. I didn't really remember that for a long time now. Project item. You know what? Let's assign the eleven one. Let's do the shield now. Oh yeah, the last spell. Because of the way the spells go is that this is summon trapper, which is a three. Five is summon zombie, and then the last one is a summon horror. So that's actually the last spell that you can do. So summon creature.
There you go. Reveal invisible. Naritoth and Rick more. That's it. That's actually all the spells you can do. You know the thing is? I think I was supposed to have found this one, like what it is, in its power. But I think I was supposed to have found the uh, tablet thing in the other one, unfortunately. So this means this will never be nothing but a question mark, unfortunately. Yeah, 
field. There we go. Vertical is almost empty. Empty of all the things that should be there, such as holy water or other ritualistic items. There's only a door handle lying on the lower shelf. has taken hold. A heavy oak door is revealed. Scratches and dents infest the wood, telling a long dark story. It is missing its handle. There seems to be no way to open it.
been two weeks since Haskell went missing, and I'm afraid to go to sleep. More than once I saw shadows of people moving past my bed, peeking through the blinds to see a wounded soldier being taken from his bed, drugged and delirious in the dead of the night, never to be seen again. As Haskell was, perhaps as I will be. What happened to them? I don't know. I am afraid to ask what happened, for I know that I would surely be the next one to be taken into the darkness. So I don't just sit there and walk around in circles trying to have my magic come back. The stone is drenched with blood, scarred by the countless strikes of a sacrificial knife. The stone reeks of the pain and torment inflicted upon it. The air is cold, filled with lingering spirits. Peter can feel their sullen despair as they witness every sacrifice with horror and disgust. They writhe in the dank air with his every breath, begging for help he cannot give for a release from their unholy tomb.
shoulders cold and a stiff body lies sprawled on the stairs. The steps. Peter attempts to flip the corpse over to discover his identity, but all that is left of the man's face is a ruined mass of human flesh. When, they, uh, when the guardian glows green, that's when you do the uh, attack.
It's not really a hard fight. Um, just use the three point power um, magical area attack thing. That's pretty much it. The interesting part is that every... Depends on who you pick. Zelatoth or Chaturga or Ulioth. They all have different guardians that do different attacks. And I think the red one is probably the hardest one. I think when you're close. Because he's like slam and everything. With the Guardian of Zillotath vanquished and the stained glass that kept it hidden lying in pieces, the essence of Jaxurga is now liberated. Its magic beckons to Peter, calling to him. He approaches cautiously. Peter reaches out for the artifact but pulls away as he feels its corrosive magic close on his hand. Wrapping his hands in a shred of clothing, he carefully lifts the artifact from its resting place. And that was how I came by it. I know it sounds crazy, but there you have it. The only proof I have is that statue. Hmm. It's a strange one. I've seen one like it before. 
You have? Yes. Very rare, though. Very obscure. I've had experts take a look at it. And none of them know what it is. And you do. I'm somewhat of an expert on these things myself. An interest I developed a long time ago while I was a young man. Then you should keep it. Lord knows I have no interest in it. I am sure it's the cause of my sleeplessness. I keep thinking about it. As if it's calling out to me. Then a drink, perhaps. For the gift. For an unusual objet d'art. Having stopped reading, Alex discovers a small penny shaped to the back of Peter's chapter page. Anyways, that's gonna do it for this video. I want to thank you for watching. Feel free to leave a comment. Hope you have yourself a good day, and this is Sweet Tooth signing off. Love you.